Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the session, Success with the Entire Jamf Platform. I'm going to give you a few moments to read our statement here. Perfect, now that you familiarize yourself with our statement, my name is Kat Garvis. I'm a senior strategic evangelist here at Jamf, and my role is to help our partners and customers in the enterprise. And with me today are a few of our amazing customers that are making up today's panel. We have John Smith with us here. John, let's say hi. Hi, Kat. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for joining us. And along with us is also Chris Ackerman. Chris, would you mind introducing yourself? Sure, Kat. Hi, I'm Chris Ackerman. I'm a senior manager in the IT security engineering group at Gilead Sciences. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being with us today. And last but not least, we also have Eric Boyd. Thanks, Kat. Yeah, I'm Eric Boyd. I'm with UC San Diego Health, and I am our Apple infrastructure architect. Thank you again for being here, everyone. Before we dive into today's panel, a quick overview. We're going to do a quick two minute introduction of Jamf in our portfolio for those who are attending JNUC for the very first time or are new to Jamf and perhaps unfamiliar with our platform. And then we'll dive right into our panel and we'll also have some time at the end for Q&A. For those who are new, Jamf was founded 18 years ago with one goal, and that was to empower people with technology. And we do that today by helping organizations be successful with Apple. We're here to help elevate and enhance the Apple experience for employees and IT. We focus exclusively on supporting the Apple platform, and by Jamf focusing solely on Apple, this allows our customers to have best-in-class support, more MDM features that speak directly to the Apple platform, and it has also given us a 96% customer retention rate. And this is our overall product portfolio to support organizations. We have Jamf now supporting our SMB markets. Jamf School is our management solution for education. And of course, Jamf Pro, our MDM solution, which is the number one rated MDM for Apple management. Alongside it now are Jamf Protect for endpoint security and Jamf Connect for identity management and security. And then at the bottom, we have Jamf Nation, which is our online community made up of over 100,000 Apple admins. And if you're attending JNUC, chances are you are already part of Jamf Nation. But for those who are learning, it's free to join. Uh, you don't even have to be a customer, and it's a really great mind share. In a nutshell, we're here to help support your Apple devices in many areas beyond management. For today's panel, we're going to be focusing on Jamf Pro, Jamf Protect, and Jamf Connect. These are the three solutions we offer that are scaled together for businesses, government, education, and the enterprise. And these are the three solutions our panelists are actively using today. And when we think about our solutions, we're here to support this platform, the Apple Enterprise Management Platform. As admins, this is something we are responsible for, whether we're in the office or remote. Since the start of 2020, things have changed in our landscape. And our goal at Jamf is to help our customers with identity, security, and management for their Apple devices, whether they're inside the four walls of their offices or outside them without negatively impacting the end user experience or requiring IT to touch the device. So with that said, let's hear from our panelists on how they are finding success with the entire Jamf platform. All right, everyone, let's maybe set the stage and let everyone get to know who you are, what your organization is like. Eric, if you don't mind, can you kick us off to tell us about your organization, the Apple devices that are there, and how long you've been using Jamf? Yeah, hi, Kat. Um, we've been using Jamf since uh, 2013, and uh, we're a teaching hospital as well as a research university. And we have the luxury of having a uh, campus bookstore on premises. Uh, we have roughly 2,000 Macs, about 3,500 iOS, iPadOS uh, supervised devices, and then, you know, uh, roughly 280 Apple TVs. Wonderful. 
I'm curious about the Apple TVs. How are those being used? We are using the Apple TVs inside all of our patient rooms and also in some of our conference rooms for uh, our patients to be able to uh, stream their uh, video apps uh, and as well as for uh, being able to, you know, have our staff throw their iPad display up to an Apple TV. I love it. Thanks for thanks for indulging me there. Uh, Chris, Jonathan, can you tell us a bit about Gilead and same question about your organization, number of Apple devices and how long you've been using Jamf? Sure. So uh, I am the uh, senior systems engineer uh, here at uh, Gilead, responsible for uh, managing the Macintosh endpoints. Um, and we are just getting uh, rolled out uh, with Mac support here at Gilead, but I myself uh, have probably used Jamf for uh, 15 years or so uh, at various different companies. And we have uh, currently about uh, 150 uh, pilot users uh, that uh, we are managing with uh, Jamf. Uh, to do everything from uh, security enforcement to uh, software distribution, and uh, pretty well. We have uh, Jamf Connect for our authentication, uh, user account management, uh, and uh, Jamf Protect uh, as an added layer of uh, security and reporting. That's wonderful. Thanks so much for sharing that. Chris, anything to add? I, From my understanding, you've got more of a security angle on things. Yeah, Kat, absolutely. I'm definitely um, you know, in charge of the security side. Um, much like John, I had experience with Jamf at a, at a previous job. Um, it's been several years, though, so uh, there was a kind of a steep learning curve. I was used to the idea of imaging and you know, binding everything to AD, et cetera. Um, but uh, no, we've had uh, a lot of success um, getting the the deploy the product rolled out and and uh, you know using Jamf Connect um, to integrate with Active Directory SSO and you know provide MFA. So we've been pretty excited about it. That's awesome. Thanks. Thanks for uh, talking about some of those things, and we're going to unpack that a little bit more. I wanted to start off with a thought. We've all been in our offices and we've all been pulled out of them. Chris, how has this transition in being remote allowed you to fuller support security? Well, you know, Kat, the great thing was that we started this project recently. And so, you know, the idea that our devices would be mobile wasn't a new one. Um, obviously, um, you know, with older technology that expects devices to be on the corporate land, um, COVID would have posed a huge problem. Um, luckily, since we've you know recently set this up and we sort of were cloud first with it, all of the functionality that we have available to us with the Jamf suite is available to our users everywhere um, without a VPN connection back to our network. So the transition has been really smooth and, and having um, this configuration has been great. That's wonderful. Really glad to hear that. And thanks for answering that question. One of the things, Jonathan, I wanted to ask you about, you had mentioned to me at one point, your organization has been primarily a Windows shop until really recently. What caused that change and got Gilead Sciences thinking, hey, let's start adopting some Apple devices? Sure, Kat. <clears throat> so it was actually uh, somewhat of a perfect storm. Uh, so for as long as I've been at, at Gilead, there has been sort of a, a Macintosh underground of, you know, a few people uh, sprinkled throughout the company that really uh, felt they were more productive on the, the Mac platform and found ways to bring their Mac uh, with them into work. But there's never been uh, official support. Then uh, recently, we acquired a, a research company that was uh, entirely uh, Mac-based. So we needed to 
uh, begin supporting them. And we acquired a new uh, CIO who was a, a huge fan and proponent of the Macintosh platform. And in addition to personally enjoying it, he also uh, felt that if we're going to attract the best and the brightest talent, we need to give people the ability to work in the way that they felt most productive. Um, and that is really what uh, kicked things into high gear and got uh, approval to move forward with the project that we're on this year of uh, making the uh, Mac a fully supported platform at Gilead Sciences. It sounds like they would get along very well with our CEO here at Jamf. Um, and I, th I think that's a really great story and it really aligns with a lot of the things that we've done with other enterprise organizations here at Jamf too. I want to pile on on that. Chris, when did you start noticing the Apple devices being inherited, right? So it sounds like an organization was acquired and were you finding any differences at a high level security angle? Were you finding any similarities? What was that like? being a predominantly Windows environment, you've adopted Apple devices. Can you tell us some more information about your findings? Well, sure. I mean, um, the first thing I would say is um, we're largely a, a Windows shop, but we have a fair amount of Linux as well. Um, and we always knew that there were some devices on the network that, um, you know, we didn't have the insight we'd like to have. Um, so, you know, we knew that Macs were around, but we didn't necessarily have control of the user accounts that were on them or, um, you know, the ability to, to do things like, um, you know, turn them off or uh, disable them if they, if they, you know, went out of our control. Um, so as we, um, you know, merged with that other company, um, we really needed to, to make sure that we could, you know, do the job right. Um, and that's why we ended up looking at Jamf Pro and Jamf Protect and Jamf Connect. Um, to make sure that we had the same capabilities that we would have with our Windows or Linux devices um, on the Mac platform. Thank you. Eric, I want to bring you in on this. If I'm not mistaken, the Apple footprint at your organization has grown too, as it was predominantly Windows. Is that right? On the medical side, um, in our healthcare organization, uh, it was primarily uh, I. Uh, all on uh, Windows-based uh, PCs and thin clients. Um, it was even, I'd go so far as to say, at a point where uh, the Apple platform was even forbidden in the organization. Um, on our research and, and uh, university side, uh, it was much more organic and uh, there were a lot of Macs and being managed in many different ways and it worked not at all. Um, and then when I was brought in, um, uh, you know, uh, we looked around and did a quick look and at every meeting you'd go to, people were on their Macs and taking notes and then you ask them, I thought we weren't supporting those devices and they'd quickly hide them under the table. Um, when uh, when uh, we made the decision to uh, manage these devices with Jamf, that certainly opened up everything to uh, both platforms and then we saw our users start uh, bringing in uh, Apple as their device of choice. Um, and kind of uh, we're seeing now sort of the same kind of uh, usage rate uh, that we're on the health side as we're seeing on the uh, uh, university side. That's great. I want to take that a little further. So how has this affected you now being work from home? Essentially, you were using our products and our solutions to support your Apple devices as they've grown in various parts of your organization. Now that we're all remote, any change or how has that affected UC San Diego health? Um, it really hasn't changed that very much, if at all. Um, we've already had the tie-in with uh, automated device enrollment from our bookstore so that devices that are purchased from the bookstore are automatically enrolled uh, through ASM and then into Jamf. Um, so that, that part's already been uh, underway for a while. Um, the 
biggest advantage I think we've had in this uh, transition is that I've gotten to turn off our on-prem software uh, distribution servers um, as there was no one on-prem to use them. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't say we uh, had any uh, speed bumps whatsoever. Sounds like it was pretty much a non-issue then when everyone was told, hey, we need you to go work remote. We need you in your home offices. Fair assumption it wasn't an issue. Right. Uh, and our department had already been working three days a week from home already. So uh, this was already in place and we already had everything configured for remote management uh, support, you know, calling into the help desk and having someone uh, walk you through an issue. Um, all was already ready to go. So, um, you know, as far as our users were concerned, uh, some of them only felt like they were working an additional two days from home. That's great. Chris, Jonathan, for your team as well, you were in the office one day and then asked to go remote and are, we're all staying remote actually a lot longer than perhaps we all anticipated. Is there anything you noticed by leveraging Jamf or leveraging the entire Jamf platform that was able to help with that transition? John, would you mind actually maybe starting us off? Enabler for us. We've been able to build the not the image, but build our provisioning process and all of our instructional uh, procedures all uh, remotely and get a feel for what the, the user uh, is going to uh, experience. And now uh, for the pilot, we are just shipping uh, laptops out to users and we know that when they open up their laptop at home, on their personal network, uh, they'll be up and running in 30 to 40 minutes uh, with very little uh, effort. That's amazing. That takes out so much time. It sounds like you're saving a lot of time in this, even though we're all remote. It sounds like for you as well, perhaps not as much of a change. Chris, in addition to what John said, if you think about some of the ways that we have been traditionally working in offices, how um, how have you seen any changes or not? Uh, I think that, you know, one of the, the most important things for us um, and one of the, the best things for our users with this platform, uh, again, is that we don't have to have a VPN connection back into work um, in order to do things like provision a new system. Um, so the, the light touch deployment process that we worked with uh, with Jamf to deploy will allow a user just to log in with the same Gilead credentials they use for anything else, including a multi-factor auth to their phone if it's the first time they've um, logged into that system. Um, and then, you know, the system will reach into our network and pull down details of their account to, to configure the system for them um, without them having to do anything. Um, so, you know, that sort of good user experience, um, you know, allows us to offer great security, um, you know, and better user experience at the same time. That's great. And you, uh, I know you focus on security. You just mentioned security, and that's probably on top of a lot of people's minds right now. In the past, you would need to be essentially connected to the corporate network. Um, how is that looking and how are you viewing that through that lens as of today? In terms of the, the Mac platform, it was kind of the least of our worries. Um, for one thing, we're able to push software or change configurations on those clients without them being connected to VPN, which is great. Um, and then, you know, since we already had the cloud first approach from the get go, those systems were already ready to go. So um, there's been a lot of, um, you know, a, a lot of things to, to look at and worry about during this, but Mac OS hasn't been high on our list of things to be concerned about. That's wonderful. I want to kind of weave in as we think about security and the process, how has Jamf Protect played a role as we've been remote and as we think about security, how has that looked at Gilead Sciences? Jam Protect is, um, is really interesting for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first reason that we started looking at it was we were trying to determine the best way to get client logs um, back into our data center. Um, and after we started to unpack what was available, um, you know, we found that 
Um, another really great thing that Jam Protect gets you is visibility into the Apple products or the, the Apple features that already exist on the platform. So we've always known that Apple has Gatekeeper and XProtect and you know the malware removal tool, but um, up until now, whether or not those tools are being used and how is something that we've never had any visibility into. So um, a big thing that we really like about JamProtect is access to that data. Um, the other thing that I thought was um, a nice surprise is that we can actually use JamProtect to evaluate our system hardening. So we use the, the CIS benchmarks as a guide for how to configure all of our systems. Um, and you know, there's a, a feature that's built into Jam Protect that allows us to measure our systems against those benchmarks right in there, right there. Um, and then finally, um, you know, I think when combined with Jam Pro, um, you start to see that you might be able to do some things that you would have to use other software for in the past, um, like control the firewall or maybe isolate a, a system that we suspect has malware on it. Um, so, you know, seeing all that functionality in one platform is really good. That's awesome. You hit on a lot of uh, different features, and it sounds like a lot of those were very beneficial to you, even while we're not in the office anymore, since we can't rely on being within those four walls. So that's great. Um, Eric, I want to uh, have you chime in, say you piloted Jam Protect early on, and got to use it both in office and now all remote. Can you tell us more about your experience? Yeah, thanks, Kat. Um, we got to play with it really early on, which was really nice. Um, we're enjoying the fact that it's already has a uh, system extension and is compatible uh, now. We don't have to change anything to uh, do our uh, Big Sur testing. Uh, and you know, as a contrast, um, we've been struggling with some of our other vendors that we're using now to uh, get the same, uh, you know, textless experience, um, and that's been kind of a, a struggle that our information security team is is dealing with. Um, but I think really one of the the great things is is to you know, like Chris mentioned, being able to have that additional visibility without needing to go into Jamf and create you know any any additional extension attributes or anything like that. Um, and then, you know, being able to take a look at uh, the the various uh, certifications that, uh, you know, others have published and then compare them against our own environment. So our, our department's been enjoying that. And then we've also been, uh, since we've been more remote, uh, we've been enjoying being able to see what that looks like. So our team has been able to see if we've had any additional concerns or any additional um, issues or uh, other software that we need to deploy or other uh, restrictions that we need to uh, engage now that we're remote. And um, uh, Jam Protect has kind of been essential in us being able to look at it and realize, you know what, we're, we're, we're in great shape. We don't need to be uh, looking to be more restrictive to our users right now. That's great. It sounds like you've got that perfect balance of this is the security information that we need and also keeping in mind the end user experience as well. Eric, I want to go a little deeper if if you don't mind. Any differences you've noticed in using Jamf Protect, which for those listening or maybe are not as familiar, it's an Apple first endpoint security tool compared to perhaps a universal endpoint or Windows first security tool. Any differences you've noticed since you've had experience with both? Yeah, um, well, I think uh, Chris also covered this too, where, you know, you have all of your gatekeeper information, you have all of your, you know, SIP checks, all of the things that are unique to Apple's security uh, are built into Jam Protect. Uh, and we don't need to build those checks in as add-ons to our other vendor software. Um, you know, that, that are just kind of there for, you know, looking for, you know, maybe uh, data access or whatnot. But um, these things are all native to Jam Protect as it's native to Apple. And so it's really great to have that built in. 
That's wonderful. Chris, uh, as Eric mentioned, you did touch on this a little bit earlier. Anything to add on that? Any differences you've noticed in using Jamf Protect versus a Windows first endpoint security tool? No, I think I think we pretty well covered it. Um, you know, the, the one thing I will say is that between Jamf Pro, uh, Jamf Protect and, and Jamf Connect, you get a lot of coverage. So, um, you know, on the Windows side, we might need um, more tooling to, to get the same results, um, you know, but um, I think that's about it. Wonderful. I think a lot of organizations are still evaluating Jamf Protect as it is new. It's, it's maybe less than a year old right now. And it's one of those things that we have seen it grow dramatically in this last year alone. And it's, it's really great to hear how you all have seen value in that. Um, I want to talk a bit about identity security. We've talked about endpoint security. I want to talk a little bit more about identity. Everyone here is using Jamf Connect. And before I go into those details, I was curious, is anyone binding to AD still? I'm going to take all of your silence as a no, and that's probably a good thing. Um, and that's one of the things we've noticed. Uh, from organizations that talk to us every day. They're perhaps binding, and we often encourage for them to get away from binding Macs. Um, and many orgs might be conflicted about trying to get away from binding. Chris, you had mentioned this earlier. How have you gotten away from binding, and how are you helping enhance identity security with Jamf Connect for your users? I would love to hear how you're able to accomplish that. I guess to back that up, a common misconception is admins or someone within the organization might say, I have to bind the device for it to be secure. So how are you able to still secure the identity and not bind? Sure, Kat, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so we found that we were able to meet our security requirements without binding. Um, as John mentioned in the in the beginning, you know, we were sort of greenfielding this solution um, and we had the advice of, of both the, the experts at Jamf and at Apple. Uh, and everybody was telling us that, um, you know, imaging and, and binding to AD is all ancient history and you don't need to do it anymore. Um, so from our perspective, um, the fact that we can remotely disable a Mac uh, or remotely wipe it, um, and, you know, and make sure that users, um, you know, who've left the company no longer have access to them, that sort of thing, without having the, the, the device bound to Apple, or I'm sorry, to, to AD, uh, means that we don't really need that requirement. Um, so I think, you know, the combination um, of having Apple Business Manager and Jamf Pro and then having Jamf Connect, which allows us to allow our users to use a single account um, either via SSO, um, you know, or would log into their Mac. They're going to use the same username and password. They can change that password or reset it with our password portal, all from the Mac, um, you know, and natively and easily. That meets all of our requirements. And if I might add, Kat, um, it works uh, seamlessly with uh, File Vault as well which is one of the problems uh, that you get into with the AD binding is the passwords uh, becoming out of sync, users getting locked out of their devices. Um, we don't have to worry about any of that um, because Jamf Connect uh, takes care of all of it for us. That's great. Eric, any thoughts on that as well? Yeah, um, since uh, 2013 and, you know, not having a lot of uh, managed Macs in the, when we took this over, uh, we also had the ability to uh, take advantage of, you know, the lack of needing to bind uh, and the recommendation against binding from Apple and Jamf to basically just bypass that altogether. Uh, if a end user wanted to create a local user account, they could. And now thanks to Jamf Connect, if they want to have their uh, local user accounts password in sync with their Azure AD uh, 
account, we have a package available in self-service that allows them to install uh, Jamf Connect. And then uh, that takes care of the, the syncing issues. Um, and, you know, just to the nature of us being a uh, medical facility, uh, research hospital, uh, and, you know, research university, we do have uh, the need for having all of our devices uh, encrypted. And therefore, uh, FileVault has been uh, a key tool, both with Jamf being able to recover a, a user's login information remotely, and also with uh, Jamf, uh, Jamf Connect to be able to handle the syncing of that password. That's great. You and Jonathan both touched on this. Eric, if you don't mind building. So it sounds like the way you have it set up, um, would you say it's fair that you're seeing a decrease perhaps in people getting locked out of their machines? Um, and if there are if they are locked out, it's a first call resolution to the help desk. Uh, you know, the the help desk just pulls up their record and jamp and gives them their their recovery key uh, over the phone. So it's it's a real quick process if they are uh, if there is a lockout. Uh, but most of the time, that's due to a you know a, a user who just changed their password on their Mac or in their in AD and and has gone on vacation and and comes uh, back and goes oh what what was that? So um, you know the. And the beautiful piece there is uh, we're able to support those users wherever they are. And again, you know, being a research university, we have staff who are traveling around the world participating in research projects uh, and we're able to support them wherever they are. Uh, we don't need to have them come on prem in order to have them uh, have their device uh, reset. So you're doing all of this while being remote. Yep. And assuming whenever we may all be going back into our offices, do you expect any change to the workflows that you talked about? No, uh, you know, the, the, the beautiful piece about this workflow is, is that it works on-prem or off-prem uh, equally consistent. Uh, the, you know, uh, we joke in our team about, you know, if we do all come back on prem, uh, do we even bother turning on our uh, AWS uh, or, you know, instant move from our AWS uh, uh, cloud distribution point? Uh, do we move from that and do we re enable our on prem file servers for our software distribution or do we just leave it all in AWS? Sounds like there's a lot of thoughts around that and uh, we'll cross that. Uh, bridge when you get there. Jonathan, I have a similar question for you as far as leveraging Jamf Connect um, and basically helping ide identity security at your organization. Any changes you noticed before you began using it or any feature that perhaps stood out, especially while we've all been remote? Um, two of the features of that are really uh, you know, helping us <clears throat> not just stay secure, but help with the user experience is the ability to uh, create the uh, local user account on the Mac uh, straight away using Jamf Connect tied in with their network uh, credentials straight away. <clears throat> their account is created properly. Uh, and then uh, when they log in, uh, they have, and if they need to change their password, uh, they can do it all through the Jamf tools and everything gets synchronized. So they've got uh, one uh, password uh, that's consistent for them and it's always in sync. Jonathan, that's wonderful. And thank you for sharing that. It sounds like what you described is you're deploying devices brand new out of the box remotely. So question I have for you, can you tell us more about that? Earlier you mentioned you're able to set up the devices in about 30 to 45 minutes, and it sounds like you're also adding Jamf Connect as well and having that layered in. Can you tell us a bit more um, about your experience and the end user experience there? Sure, Kat. A 
key to that uh, all functioning so well together is the tight integration between Champ and the Apple Business Manager. By uh, purchasing all of our Macs in Roll Business Manager and then assigning uh, those Macs uh, to Jamf network. And as soon as that Mac gets uh, onto the, the network and goes into activation, it's told that it is to our Jamf infrastructure. So from uh, the get-go, uh, the device uh, is secure, uh, it's managed, it's got our company branding, uh, and the user uh, can feel comfortable uh, in going through the, the setup process knowing uh, that uh, they're in good hands. That's great. That's honestly our goal, right? We want to make it easier for IT and also it be the a really great experience for the end user as well. And it sounds like you've accomplished that. So honestly, kudos and, and great job there. I want to pivot. All of you started using Jamf Pro initially. And when you started using Jamf Pro, what got you thinking we should use something for the Apple platform versus something else out there that is a single pane of glass? That's something that I think a lot of organizations are always thinking of. They might be saying, hey, we already have something that can manage Apple and Windows devices. What got you thinking, I know a lot of you have been using Jamf Pro in your career for the last several years, but ultimately, I'll start with Chris. What have you found to be the big reason why or the most value add to focusing on a platform like ours? Interesting question, Kat. So um, one thing from, um, from a history is I've found over the years that sometimes offering, um, you know, buying a solution because you can use it on, on more than one platform, um, sometimes that's a really effective strategy and, and other times you end up with kind of the worst of both worlds um, or a, a subpar solution for all the platforms. Um, or more often, I think with Windows and Macs, um, you might end up with something that's really strong on the Windows side and, and not as strong on the Mac side. Um, at the kickoff of this project, we had a, a long list of requirements that we were looking to fulfill. Um, and so we looked at what was on the market and, you know, Jamf Pro uh, really was the hands down best solution for, for our users. That's great. Any specific call outs in Jamf Pro or anything um, outs anything that stood out to you in your organization, even when you went through the POC process? Yeah, I was actually pretty surprised by how far um, how far we've come along with Jamf Connect. Um, a lot of the problems that that that, that product solves, uh, I remember having you know uh, in the past. So being able to offer an integration with SSO um, and to have one username and password that users use um, across their devices, you know, without really knowing what's going on in the background, um, that's a big win for us. Um, and the fact that, um, you know, it's going to reconcile changed passwords in either direction, um, that's, that's just awesome. So um, Jamf Connect especially was a, a big surprise to me. I knew that we would have um, some help from Jamf in that area, but I didn't know how good the product would be. Wonderful. Thank you. Eric, I know you've also uh, a similar question for you, actually. Eric, anything you want to add that you found in your organization? as far as anything that perhaps surprised you when it came to looking at a single pane of glass or focusing on a solution like Jamf Pro or really any of our solutions since they all focus solely on the Apple platform. Would love to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, um, again, uh, I think our staff can, you know, our information security team can continue to use their single pane of glass thanks to all of the different tie-ins uh, that Jamf has, both with their APIs, webhooks, um, and all the other integrations that are you know, available. Uh, we can integrate, uh, uh, you know, we're a ServiceNow shop, so we could integrate uh, Jamf into our ServiceNow instance if we wanted to. Uh, our information security team and our networking and um, uh, server team are using uh, 
like Splunk in order to do logging that way. And so we have our Jamf logs being imported into there. So uh, really Jamf is really, the best word I can use is flexible. Uh, you know, it, it is the tool that we want as Apple admins to give us the integration and management of an Apple platform in a way that is what you would expect as an Apple admin, uh, but at the same time, giving uh, others the tools and research and numbers and reporting uh, that they're expecting in the format that they want it. So having those tools built into Jamf or you know, being able to build your own tools that tie into Jamf or even existing tools, uh, there's just so many different ways that you can do this and be successful the way you want it to be. Wonderful. Jonathan, any thoughts on uh, that as well? Anything come to mind in, in addition to what Chris might have said? Uh, just uh, the one thing, Kat. Uh, the other thing that uh, we benefit from uh, with going with the Jamf platform is the uh, the community of uh, Jamf users, uh, Jamf has uh, been in the uh, the market for for so long and has been a leader in uh, uh, Mac OS endpoint management. That there are um, just solutions to just about every problem. Um, out there in Jamf Nation, in the Slack communities. Um, and uh, while Jamf has a, a tremendous uh, internal support organization, uh, there are also, um, you know, plenty of resources for scripts and ideas and encouragement uh, in the Thank you. Uh, yeah, I got to say shout out to our Jamf Nation community and especially our Jamf heroes. We would not be where we are without you. Um, so thank you for helping build that community. Jonathan, thanks for that call out to them. It is one of those things where it's part of our platform. And sometimes I think it's the one thing that may not be front of mind, but as you are exploring or trying to dig deeper in the Apple platform and Jamf being right there along the way, that community, as you mentioned, Jonathan, really, really stands out. A couple final questions before we open up to our Q&A. Eric, anything that surprised you when or saw you saw value in and using Jamf Pro, Jamf Connect, and Jamf Protect? Yeah, um, really, the biggest piece was just how well integrated it all is together, and how easy it is to, you know, build different pieces on top of one another. Um, you know, being able to take advantage of Jamf Protect to leverage uh, conditional access in Jamf, you know, to being able to uh, reduce or increase restrictions on devices uh, connecting to other resources within the organization. Um, that's been just fantastic. Um, I really love the different opportunities that that gives us. And then additionally, um, we don't need to worry about what these platforms uh, are going to do when Apple releases new operating systems. Um, we've been in the past, we've seen uh, organizations where um, you know, you have to wait to upgrade or you can't buy new equipment because they're waiting on uh, a third party vendor to make their software available uh, for that version, which, you know, given that our users can go out to the bookstore and buy their devices now and then get them set up and have them automatically enroll in Jamf, that is just such a non-issue for us that it, it really kind of takes that potential pain point away and completely remove it from our users' uh, visibility. I'm glad you touched on same day operating system support. That is something that I think may not be quote unquote, a feature you see, but it's a feature you experience. And it's one of those things that really helps keep things together. 
Chris, any thoughts on and your experience in same day OS support that Jamf has such a strong commitment to to be lockstep with Apple? I'm curious to hear your thoughts on on how you've received same day OS support from us. Well, that's always been the the trick with enterprise support of Mac OS, right? Is that um, back in the day when we were still imaging things, you know, you would have an image that was created for a certain version of the OS. And as soon as Apple announced that a new OS was coming, you knew you'd had to go out and stockpile a bunch of hardware that would run your old image uh, so that you had enough time uh, to catch up, right? Before you ran out of stock and, and moved to the next one. Um, so the fact that, um, you know, uh, the Jamf and the platform at least are, are moving with the OS, I think is a great help. Um, we do still have some legacy components that are outside of that universe and that, you know, we'll have to make sure play nice in the, you know, in the new world. Um, but it's uh, of great benefit to know that, you know, the, the configuration method and the systems that we already have set up are going to continue to work as we move forward. Thank you. The end users are really at the center of this. They're the ones using the Apple devices, admins like yourselves, you're supporting them. How has self-service played a role in your organization? Eric, I'd like to start with you if you don't mind. Yeah, um, self-service has been really uh, kind of the hidden gem of uh, Jamf for our users. Uh, we don't really advertise that it's there, uh, but our users find it uh, gen uh, sort of organically uh, through our automated patch management where they see a notification that there's a, a software patch available to them and then they click it and then that launches uh, self-service uh, and then they can uh, decide if that's something they wanna update now or later. Uh, and then they're also able to uh, have access to a, a bunch of essential links for our organization. For example, uh, links to our HR organization so they can open up a ticket with HR or to be able to open up a ticket with the service desk uh, to get support. So all of those tools are there and accessible for them, as well as being a really easy way for them to install the software that they need. So if they go out and get a brand new computer and they're not sure what they need to install, they can just open up self-service and have all the different applications at their fingertips. Thank you. Wow, sounds like you are doing a lot and there's a lot of different use cases and that's really, really great. Jonathan, anything to add as far as the use of self-service and how it's helping end users at Gilead Sciences? To, to, to follow on with what um, Eric said, we uh, are trying to, to leverage those, I guess, sort of off-label uses uh, for it as well. In addition to providing additional software packages uh, for users. We have uh, links to a number of uh, self-help videos uh, that we've created in there for how do I uh, reset my password using Jamf Connect. Um, and so we've got a little video there that shows users how to, you know, go up, click here, click there. Um, and uh, we've got links out to uh, support resources, uh, both internally and externally uh, to help users uh, with things. And uh, even a few scripts that will, uh, you know, clear their cache, uh, check their um, file system permissions, and then um, reboot their laptop if uh, need be to improve performance and fix some niggling support issues they might have. It sounds like you have a really nice balance of self-help and how to be self-sufficient as well as troubleshooting and maintenance. So uh, thank you for sharing that. We're going to close out soon and open it for Q&A, but before we do that, any final comments or anything you want to share with those listening in that perhaps have not adopted the entire Jam platform, or if there's a question perhaps I did not ask you that you feel could be helpful to anyone chiming in and listening to today's session. Chris, if you don't mind starting us off, anything come to mind? 
Sure, Kat. Um, just that um, you know, if you're approaching the Mac platform, you know, from the outside, um, I would I'd approach with an open mind. Um, start with a strong list of requirements and and be flexible about how you can meet them. Um, and uh, you know, I'm, it's hard to imagine a, an enterprise, a large enterprise, that doesn't end up using Jamf. But um, you know, keep an open mind and and uh, look for interesting ways to to solve the problems. Jonathan, anything to add? I think uh, Chris covered things uh, pretty well. Uh, I will follow on with uh, what he said. The having the strong list of uh, both on the business side, but also um, you know with an idea of who you want to start off. Uh, as your your initial user base is really going to get be the key to your success. Thank you. And Eric, any final thoughts, any comments or anything that comes to mind that didn't come up in today's panel? Yeah, I think the the biggest one that uh, us admins uh, are concerned with is what happens when we need help. And I want to quickly call out um, just out of almost, I feel almost an obligation because of how great uh, Jamf support has been. Uh, when when I call in for for help, uh, you know, if there if I have, you know, an issue that I need, or if there's an outage or whatnot that maybe I've caused, um, it's uh it's really awesome to be able to call in and get someone right away to understand the issue and start working on it right away. Um, uh, calling Jamf support has always been, you know, uh, something that you don't want to have to do, uh, but it is by far the best experience I've had with the organization getting support. So a uh, huge thank you to all of our uh, support staff that we've worked with uh, out there. So thanks, everybody. Yes, thank you to our support team. Um, and speaking of thank yous, I want to thank the three of you for joining us today, sharing your experience and sharing some best practices for others in the in the uh, Apple and Mac community, just trying to figure things out. And I think you shared a lot of really great points that can help a lot of folks listening in today. So thank you for your time. And I wanna thank everyone for listening. If you have any questions, we will now open up for Q&A and start going through the Q&A. If you've started chatting us, we want to make sure we can try to go through as many questions as possible. So once again, thank you for joining. We hope you learned something new. We hope this was very helpful. And once again, thank you to our amazing panel for your thoughts and insight. So thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful JNUC.